Hello, welcome to the Blue Mountain Makes Podcast. I'm Mary Lynn and I am not dead. Uh, I kind of fell off the face of the earth for a few months. I had a rough winter and a slow spring. So we are headed into the summer months and things are smoothed out on my end. And I don't want to say that I'm back, but I am back today, for today. So, um, yeah, that having been said, the last few months I have not... I've lost a lot of my knitting mojo, a lot of it. Um, that is mainly why I have not been posting because I really haven't had much to post about, to be perfectly honest with you. It just kind of seems silly to post a video and say, well, in the last two weeks I knit half a sock. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I do have a few finished objects just in time for hot weather. I've got a lot of wool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I. Knitting Mojo's back in full swing. I've got at least one... I have one summer project on my needles. I've got a shawl on my needles. I'm trying to finish up a cardigan. So I will share all that with you guys and um, some of my spinning progress because that has... The, the fuel for that fire has not diminished. I am spinning all the time. You can't... Eh, you can't see it. There's my dog and my wheel. So... Yeah, let's jump into it. I feel super out of practice. You would not think that you would need to practice to sit alone in a room and talk to uh, a phone camera, but apparently I do. <laughs> uh, all right. So I guess I will start with what I am wearing today. And I will scoot back. I have a new desk set up too since the last time I recorded, so all of this is just kind of, it's even more of a mess than usual. Um, but today I have a cardigan. This is the Brienne Cardigan by Brienne Moody, I believe her name is. It is a very interesting construction for a cardigan. Um, I think I have only successfully completed two cardigans. And one of them didn't really fit, so I never really wore it, so I don't know if I can consider that a successful completion. But um, they were both top-down. So this, this guy, I'm just going to take it off because... It's weird. So, you start with your cute little pop of color cuff, and you knit that completely separate, and then you join it with your new yarn, and then you knit up the sleeve across the back and the front panel so that it's making kind of this like U shape over your shoulder. And then you get to this midpoint and then you put everything on hold and you do the same thing from the other side all the way across and then you stitch it up the middle in the back and then you have to stitch ugh, your sides closed and the arms so it is there is some seaming but it is not done it's only done in two pieces versus you know like front panel front panel back panel so there's that. Um, I will say, there's a few things I forgot about <laughs> doing on this cardigan. Aww. So you have this really cute um, pop of color detail that goes down the back and kind of up over the shoulder on the one side. You're supposed to match it on the other side on the sleeve so that you have these two um, contrast on both sides of your body. Well, guess who forgot to do it? And I was, gosh, I don't know. So I think it's supposed to be at like this point in your sleeve and I was like up here. And there was nothing that was going to induce me to rip that back. I just was not going to do it. I will say I um, I knit most of this twice. Like I knit this like one and a half times probably. Safe to say. Because I used the wrong... I, I did this like bulk order of drops yarn. I did a bulk order of drops yarn back in like September-ish. Yeah. Sometime in, around there. September, October. They always put their alpaca yarn on sale. And I'm pretty partial to all of their alpaca blends. So I bought a ton of Lima, which is what this is made of, and I bought it in gray. I had everything listed out. Like I kept my order sheet, my receipt, and I put, you know, this is for this project. And I try to only buy like large amounts of yarn when I have a project in mind. So 
I even wrote it all down. But did you think I checked it before I cast on this guardian? No. I, I, I knit half of it in white and pink. And then was like, I don't think I have enough white. I just don't think I'm going to like make it. Sure enough, it didn't because I ordered that for a completely different project that has more color work. So I needed less of the main color. So that having been said, ripped it out. I mean, the ball that I ripped out was probably that like that big. It was a lot of knitting. Kind of wasted. <laughs> Oops. So yeah. Anyhow, who I really like this. I have worn this a lot. I was lusting after this cardigan for a long time. My husband got me the what is it called? Neons and Neutrals by uh, Lobby Anime. Amy. I think it's Amy. And this was one of the patterns. It was in that book. And it is been released for individual purchase I think within the last month or so from Brienne's Ravelry page so if you are interested in it I highly recommend it the only things that I changed were this section here so I saw on Ravelry I was kind of going through other people's projects and one thing that I noticed people were complaining about was how the neck sits so you pick up for your button band it's not there's no buttons but button band pick up your button band after you've seamed everything together and people said that this part like even with the, modifi the modification I did it doesn't really want to lay flat which doesn't really bother me because I don't ever like really pull it closed but the people's were like really buckled and gaping open and it just it was not sitting right so the only modification I did was instead of picking up just the normal number through here I did three in the point so I added two extra stitches to what I should have here and it just gave it I mean just enough that I think it kept the shape it still looks nice I feel like it sits well yeah oh and it has pockets Ta -da! and they're pink <laughs> I like it I mean you can't like put much in your pocket but I stick my hands in my pockets when I'm feeling awkward and I do that a lot so yeah I really like it um, would I need another one? If I was being patient, yes, yes I would. It's just, it is a funny construction. It's not hard. It's just, I think it's not as rewarding for my brain and the way that my brain works because, you know, when you're knitting a sweater from top down, you're like, ooh, I only have three inches left and then I'm gonna have a whole body of a sweater and all I have to do are the sleeves versus this where you have these like floppy pieces and you're like, I don't even know what that is. My dad came to visit one night while I was working on it and he's like, I don't, I don't understand the vision for this. So I made him stand like this and draped him in the pieces and I was like, this is how it'll fit eventually. So that was pretty funny. Um, this is a size two. I didn't mention any of the important stuff. Size two, um, I heard some feedback from people that they run a little large, which normally I knit a size three in most everything. Uh, and the two is perfectly fine. I knit the... She gives you two options for length and it's like a hip length and a waist length so this is the longer hip length one because I wanted it to meet my jeans. Size 2 US 5 needles for the body, 4's for the cuff I, I think. I might have to double check that when I'm editing. Pretty sure it's 5's. Um, yeah and drop sleeve for the whole body. I know some people are a little tweaked out about knitting you know garments out of anything that has an alpaca content because there is a likelihood of it stretching i will say with drops lima i have multiple sweaters that are pretty hard wearing i mean i'm not like out skiing in them or whatever but normal day-to-day -day wear no problems no issues no stretching minimal peeling i mean you know they all peel but i feel like there are other drops yarns that peel much worse so that's my thoughts on that my second finished object. Very excited. This guy has been on my to knit list for two years now and it did take me a long time to knit it mainly because of you know the lack of juju or whatever you want to call it but it's done. It's beautiful. I love it. This is my Talvadin. This is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. It is a top down round yoke, lots of color work, beautiful, beautiful fingering weight sweater. Yay! I love this. It just, oh, 
and it's really long. I used <laughs> size two for my cuffs. I used size three for the body and size four for my uh, color work because I do find that my color work does tend to pull in a bit. So I just decided that I would avoid any of those issues and just go ahead and up a size. This is the size three. Things to note about the pattern. So the way that she has it written, it is a fingering weight sweater design, but she slowly increases the size of the needles that she uses either in the body and also in the sleeves so that you get kind of an A-line construction. I opted to not do that because I just didn't really feel like that's what I wanted out of the sweater. So this mine is a little bit more of a, a close fitting, more you know, just traditional sweater type. Um, I use pallet yarn for this. It is my go-to fingering weight, 100% wool yarn. It softens so, so nicely in a sweater. I made a DRK everyday sweater out of this last year and I wore that sucker all winter. I was kind of shocked. Like I know she, I know it's called the everyday sweater because you'll want to reach for it every day. But I did not think that I would love it as much as I did. I wore it all the time. I just felt like I looked so good in it. The yarn held up really well. It's only a two ply. So I was a little concerned about pilling, breakage, whatever. I, it does pill, but I have been shaving it and not had any issues out of that one. So I went ahead and went with this one and it's so budget friendly. Like, I don't know. And I love the stitch definition on it. It lays well. It blocks great. Yeah. I did opt to not do the color work on the sleeves. I think it's the same. I think it's this pattern at the sleeve edge, but I kind of felt like I had, I had a lot going on. You know, this is a lot for me. It's plenty. I love it. I have not worn it. Obviously it is quite warm. Our weather is so weird. I'm in Virginia and this past weekend it was like 92 degrees and we had like housework to do like outside housework I'm sweating awful wanted to die <laughs> dehydrated last night it was 40 degrees i think my garden plants suffered a little what is going on nobody knows nobody knows it's almost june but yes love this sweater absolutely absolutely would make it again look at my birds they, uh, I will say when I was knitting it, I had a lot of vertical bunching, which I thought was weird. Like for color work, I usually, you know, most everybody has kind of the, um, where to pull in, but yeah, my, I don't know if it's just because of the birds and all their texture or what, but I had a lot of bunching in through the birds. So I'm very happy to say that that all blocked out very well. Yay. So I'm gonna just, you know, put that away for next fall. It's gonna look great. Jeans and boots. And the only other f sort of finished object I have, I guess it's a half finished object, is a sock. This is the Jolene colorway from Tiny Human Knits. Beautiful, I love it. I love her hand, uh, hand dyed yarn. It's self striping, obviously. Comes with this cute little accent color. And uh, I haven't really made a whole lot of progress on my other one, so that's all there is to share. I don't really follow a pattern for socks. I think I do, it's 64 stitches on a size one. Is it 64 or is it 62? I think it's 64. Uh, and yeah, I just go until I feel like I've got enough and then I do short row heels. I just, I have like a really weirdly narrow heel and I just feel like these, kind of cling a little bit better maybe or they hug a little better I used to do the gusset flap like the traditional heel flap and gusset I mean um and it's just it's like it's too wide on the back of my foot so these are what I like it's my first time doing a, an accent color on the heel and toe I think it's come out okay I've not blocked these I don't ever block my socks probably should especially if I'm gonna be showing them off but I just really wanted to show this beautiful colorway this has really been, oof, other than the piece of dirt that's on it, it's been a lot of fun to knit. So yeah, there's that. Okay, I feel like I'm just like blowing through this stuff. 
I also feel like I'm really forgetting to like run through all the stuff that I'm supposed to. So if I have forgotten more than what I think I've forgotten, I will put it on the screen. Sorry. I've probably, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Yay! All right, so moving on to, moving on to works in progress. I, as usual, have three. I almost always have three whips going at one time. I don't know what it is. It's my magic number. It's just what I like. So I'll just do one that is at hand. Probably gonna make some noise. Ugh. I very mistakenly believed that um, I would finish this in time for the March to May knit along with Andrew Mowry. And then I laughed the closer we got to the end of May. <laughs> ha 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 ha, not done. So, this is a Strata Cardigan by Andrew Mowry. This is a size three. It is knit on size two needles all over. As soon as I said that, as soon as those words came out of my mouth, it's like, is that right? That is right, size two needles. I will have size ones for the button band and cuff. Ooh. So this is not my first time making this, uh, well, it's technically my first time making this pattern. So I've not made the cardigan, but I have made the pullover version of this, the birch pullover, I believe it is. And the birch pullover, so the, the, the way that this is made is half fisherman's rib, which just basically means when you're knitting it flat, you work one row knitting into the row below, and then on the wrong side, you just knit the whole row. It's so quick and easy. It's mindless. Yes, it is teeny, teeny, tiny needles. Like, they're sock needles, but it just, you know, it's not bad. Versus the pullover, because it's worked in the round, the entire thing is knit into the row below, knit one, purl one, and then, then purl a row. So it takes a lot longer, but I feel like I got that one done faster than I got this done. I'm also really trying hard to not put time limits on myself, especially knowing that, you know, the knitting mojo has been where it's been for the last however many months. I'm just trying to, you know, self-care, be kind to yourself. It's a hobby. It's not my job. But that having been said, this has been very enjoyable. And it is mindless enough that I use this as book knitting. I've been reading a lot this year. Like I always read a lot, but I've been reading a lot, a lot this year. Um, yeah. So obviously this is striped. My birch pullover is not, and I'm already planning to make another one of these and not stripe it. So that's the thing. The stripes, or the yarn rather, main color is Drops Flora, part of that big order I put in last year for this cardigan. There's that. This is, ooh, this is Knit Picks Hawthorne Kettle Dyed. I could not tell you the number. I bought this ages ago. I made socks out of it, and I don't know that I've ever worn those socks, to be perfectly honest with you. And I also don't know if I have enough left over to finish this card again, so I might have to find those socks and rip them to pieces so that I can finish this. I don't know. We might be okay. I'm like... The thing, too, with this um, stitch pattern is it's, you know, obviously very squishy and stretchy. I can't remember how much my birch stretched after blocking, like, vertically. Width-wise, it doesn't really matter because it's a cardigan and it just, you know, just gonna hang. But vertically is gonna make a difference. I'd rather have it longer than shorter though, so I need to just, I might have to go scab some yarn. We'll find out. My other color in this is this color. This is Dyed By Me, Spun By Me. I considered this a failed experiment when I dyed it because I was really hoping for like really vibrant blues and kind of a deeper brown color. I was going for like beachy maybe and I just felt like it was really washed out but I will say it spun up beautifully. I dyed it in the um I dyed the robing so it spun up gorgeous. I really like the did a two ply. I always do a two ply. Focus. Or don't. That's fine too. Whatever. Anyways, so there's a little bit of yellow. There's blues. There's brown. There goes my dog. Because the neighbor dogs are working. But yeah, all of this is fingering weight. Honestly, this is the thinnest of my fingering weight. Like, 
kind of find that funny. And I also found it funny too that as I've been knitting this, I have realized that there are colors in that purple that almost exactly match the colors in my hand dyed. Like they look very much like they were meant to go together. It's kind of weird. So I'm, I'm here for that. My real question to myself is what do I own that I'm going to match with purple? I don't wear purple. I don't wear anything that goes with purple. I could just do black, I guess. I don't know. I just really thought it was pretty and it's a nice collar combination and I cast it on in March. So I was feeling very springy and I wanted to use up some scraps. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I am very pleased with this so far. So I've got not that much done with the body. I'm thinking probably like that much more and then I'll start the ribbing. Yeah, that's that. Definitely not getting it done in the next day <laughs> to be to be uh, an entry in the March to Main It Along. Oh well. It's fine. I'm not terribly worried about it. The only thing that does suck is all all of these bad boys. I'm trying to stay on top of them and like, I don't know, every 10 rows or so, or 10 color changes, I just go back and weave them in. Because I think if I wait until the end, I'm going to rip my hair out. So there's that. Yeah, that's all I got to say on that. Size 2, size 2, or size 3, size 2 needles, size 1 for the cuff. Hooray. Ta-da! This will eventually become a outline tee by Jessie Maid. This is my second one. I made one last year and I wore the absolute heck out of it. So last year I did a size three. And I should have known, like I knew it was going to be oversized. But it is so oversized that I ended up having it like, so it's a v-neck shirt. And... It was so big that like the the neck would like gape open it would just kind of constantly be like slipping and sliding and you're doing this number so i ended up taking a like string and tying it around the back of my neck so that it, it can only slide so far off the front um but it being so oversized it looks so cute like french tucked into some jeans i wore it i mean like a ton last year so that having been said, I'd like it to be slightly smaller. So I decided to go for the size two instead of the three. Plus you're supposed to do the um, ribbing on size four and then switch to a size five for the body. And I opted to just do the whole thing in fours. So it's gonna be, I think, significantly smaller. Yeah, pretty significantly smaller, but this will be more of a fitted tee, I think, than not. It is absolutely covered in dog hair so apologies so I shouldn't have like black clothes with a white dog can't stop me um so yeah knitting in on size four needles you do a twisted rib at the bottom you do a little trick so that you have these holes every so often in the tee so that way when you finish shaping at the top you just drop these stitches and they it's so much fun to just rip the stitch all the way down to the bottom and those holes will catch it so that it doesn't unravel all the way. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cute knit. It's super simple. It's bottom up. You get to your front shaping, you shape your V, sew your seams together and then they have like little teeny uh, sleeves. So very simple pattern. Highly recommend it. I really recommend all of her patterns if you're a newer knitter because she does kind of take an extra step to really give you the extra like hand holding I don't like to call it that the extra explanations for stuff that like you know some designers take for granted that you know what that means she really goes out of her way to say this means da 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 and if you don't need that extra hand holding just skip it you know what I mean like it's not I don't think that it's derogatory or offensive in any way as a more advanced knitter to have that extra help I just skim over it and you know half the time I make mistakes anyway so whatever really really like it I'm using drops saf saffron saffron it's 100% cotton it feels gross to knit with I'm gonna be honest I've just decided I'm like a wool girl and that's kind of it but it's 
it's really nice to just toss it in the wash and hang it out to dry and not have to worry about it, especially in the summer. And my bigger one I wear over top of my like bathing suit a lot. So it's got sunscreen and stuff on it. It's held up really well. 10 out of 10. Plus these balls of yarn are like $1.50, maybe. So all in all, I'm looking at like a $8, $10 shirt. Heck yeah. This is like the drop show. <laughs> drops and palette. <laughs> it's all drops and palette today. <laughs> Whatever. I'm cheap. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Very excited to have another one of these in my wardrobe. Okay, my last work in progress is a shawl. I feel like I always have to have a sweater, one or two sweaters and a shawl. If I don't have a shawl on my needles, I'm just not happy. And maybe that's what got me down over the winter. I didn't make any shawls. And actually I tried to make one and I ripped it out. I was trying to make, um, oh, what is that thing called? The Dustland Shawl by Stephen West. Because I love it and I love the textures of it, but the yarn I chose was just too dark and it was really, not showing the textures and just kind of bumming me out in general. I ripped that sucker right out. This though, oh, I'm so excited. Oh, sorry. Ah, it's beautiful. This is the Yara by Natasha Warrensby. Uh, what is her actual handle? Moonstruck Knits. I'm sure people were screaming it at the screen. Moonstruck Knits. Yay, it's beautiful. I'm using the same color she used in her sample. Um, gosh, it's just like, I cannot get over this stitch here. It's entirely mosaic knitting, like this whole thing is mosaic, which I also love. It's just so, it's just simple, you know? I don't have to, there's no, there's no floats, there's no dragging, there's nothing to catch on the back of my beautiful shawl. It just, and it makes such great textures. This goes by pretty quickly, especially at this stage, because it's not, you know, it's not very large. There's only like 60-some stitches, I think, on this. But, sorry, I heard a knocking. It was my dog scratching. Um, it is not TV knitting. It is not, it's definitely not book knitting, because I have to pay attention, which I don't always do. If you've been here before, you know that instructions are not my strong suit. I'll just skim through a section and be like, yeah, I got it. And then just knit away. Had to rip back. Oh, I don't know. This much. <laughs> because somehow I just completely skipped these crosses. So I went from like this cute color work band straight into another section of these. And then I'm looking at the picture like she's got these like crosses. I don't understand where I went wrong. Oh six inches back. Rip it back. So I did. It was fine. It's fine. This is it on size fours. Most everything I do is fingering weight yarn for the most part. This is also palette. So I've got white palette. I've got charcoal palette. I don't know what that palette is, but it's pretty. It's got kind of red and yellow. I don't know if the microphone is going to pick it up, but there's like peeps. I have baby chickens in a bathtub because that's how redneck I am. Dumb. It's a story for later, but I think one of them has escaped the tub in the tub. I'll have to go rescue it here in a minute. Anyways, and then I have this kind of ochre yellow color. Beautiful, beautiful. So the yellow and the red are really only used for these... I've got to go save that bird. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Story time interlude. Um, I have chickens. I had nine chickens at the start of 2023. I'm down to three. It was a sad year for the chickens at this household. So I've been trying to find somebody that's like selling pullets near me that I can just go buy birds. I can just chuck outside with the other birds. Nobody had any. And I raised the last two batches of chickens in my house. The first time was in my old master bathroom, which was fine because we had this giant triangle tub that nobody ever used in the corner and it had one of those like 70s light hooks above it. It was perfect. Hung the light, little birds lived in there. No one ever used the tub because like literally by the time it filled up, I was out of hot water. It was done. 
So it was fine. Didn't care if the tub got dirty, whatever. Second time we had redone the master bathroom, no more tub. So I was like, I'll just put them in the guest room. Nobody goes in there. The mess that those birds made, <laughs> there was dust. It was just like this thick dust everywhere. And of course there's like curtains and bedding and all the stuff that I was constantly washing, getting the mattress pulled out of there. It was just a nightmare. And I said, never again, I'm never having baby birds in the house. So I couldn't find any pullets, down to three birds. Everybody's very sad. And we went to the tractor supply to buy dog food. And they had baby birds. They always have baby birds this time of year. And I always look at them and then I go, no, remember how much of a pain in the butt it was? Well, I told myself going into this, I was like, I couldn't find any like chicken swaps, poultry swaps, nothing, nothing to get, you know, new birds. There was like a guy selling it like an hour away from me. And I was like, I don't want to drive an hour to go get these birds from a sketchy guy in the middle of nowhere, you know, whole thing. Anyways, I said, if they have Rhode Island Reds, I'll think about it. Well, sure enough, of course they had Red Al Rhode Island Red Pullets and they also had Jersey Giants, Jersey Giants. I always feel like I'm Jersey Mike's. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Jersey Giants, these little black chickens, and they said that they're extra friendly. So of course I got two of those. So now I have four baby birds, I have two brown ones, two black ones, and they are in my guest bathroom inside of the tub because it has sliding glass doors. And so they're in a plastic tub inside of the tub behind glass doors and my dogs <laughs> spend all of their time just watching them. It's like dog zoo. They just stand and watch these birds and now they're just big enough that they can like flap their half formed wings and kind of they hop on top of their food and then they hop to the edge of the bin and then they just fall off the side and then they're stuck outside of their little bin and they, can, they can't get back in. So then they just cry and I have to go rescue them and toss them back in. Long story short. Sorry. <laughs> so anyways, there's that. Um, what else do I have to say about my Yara? I'm just so pleased like it just so crisp i am a little concerned about blocking this and the charcoal bleeding because palette does bleed a little bit um i have used palette enough at this point that i basically know what to expect out of it all the way around for all things if you're interested in getting palette and you buy it and you've never used it before probably you're gonna be like oh my gosh it's a little rustic it's a little it's a little itchy it's a little stiff it softens up so, so nicely when it blocks, so like, don't stress it. And it gets even softer every time you block it or wash it. I love it. Never had any felting issues, etc., etc. But like I said, it does bleed a little, and this is so dark and, and, you know, white that it might have some issue. I'll just cold block it with a color catcher, and it'll be fine. So yeah, can't wait. I need to work on this some more. I haven't touched it in a while. I've gotten sucked into some really good book series, but kind of feeling like maybe this weekend is the time because I need this in my life. It's gonna be gorgeous. Mm. And it looks really really complicated and it's not. That's the beauty of it. Like this stitch is just, I mean it kind of looks like fish scales to be perfectly honest. I love it. It's a two color modified linen stitch. Interesting. I know. So yeah you'll finish, you, I will finish the top of this. I've got I'm currently in the no increase section, so it doesn't really want to lay flat, but it's basically going to be like a giant floppy triangle. And then you pick up for the bottom and there's another section of mosaic for the bottom. And there's these little like fringy do's, I'm not, or no, there's bobbles instead of fringe on this one. I despise bobbles, but I might do it. We'll see. And that is that. As far as like acquisitions go, I haven't bought a whole lot of yarn. I have bought a lot of fiber. I don't think I'm going to get into all that today because I feel like it's going a little long. But also, I still feel like I'm out of practice and like, uh, I don't know what to say, but I do want to get some um, feedback. Hold. Ugh. So, I had a shirt, t-shirt, that in it last year, it was... Art Nuova by Unwind Knitwear. I finished the whole thing. I wore it in the house like twice. I hated the fit. It's a beautiful design. I don't think it's meant for people with my body size. My bust is way too large for the patterns that I have tried from that designer. She's a very thin lady. 
it's nothing against her. I'm sure I could modify it, but I didn't and I'm not going to. So I ripped it out and long story short, I have a lot of this color that I am now going to use in an Alpine Bloom, the t-shirt version by Caitlin Hunter. The only trouble is I've been trying to figure out what color I want to make the flowers. So the contrast color that I had that I ripped out of that other sweater was kind of like a silvery, silvery gray. This is drops floor. So it was the same, same yarn. But I'm like, oh, it's kind of boring. It's all the same color. And then I keep seeing people with their like variegated yarns and they look so good. So I spun this and I'm like, I don't, I just don't know. It's got a lot of orange and I don't know if the orange is going to like, I don't know. I need to just do a swatch to be honest with you. Cause I keep staring at it like, eh. So the orange is one thing and there's kind of like this weird brownish dark color. Like see, I think this looks fine together. I don't know. If I'm being colorblind and it looks really awful together, please let me know. <laughs> I also have some like really bright. I don't want to get too bright. That's the thing. So I have these two. I just keep spinning and I'm not knitting as fast as I'm spinning. And so I'm just ending up with all of the spun yarn. So this I originally thought I was going to pair with the other. Like there's no way. That's not happening. This I want to pair with gray to make a dollar sweater. Just haven't done that. And honestly... Having spun for a while now, I don't think that this is consistently fingering weight enough to get by with that. I think it, it's more of a sport, questionably DK in some places. The longer I spin, the finer it gets. Some of, some of this is like thread. Oops. Then I have this really pretty color, but I think that that's like way too orange. I don't like that either. I really hate that. So I think I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. Is orange the way to go? Probably not. So, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. It's a thought. I gotta use up some of this hand spot. I should use it on a shawl, but I just keep spinning more. Like right now, I'm spinning that, which is gorgeous. That is Hail Satin. It's a colorway by Hipstrings. Love Hipstrings. I bought a bunch of her braids last May at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. And then I was like patiently waiting for this year's because I was totally going to go. And then it didn't. And then I got really bad FOMO and it ordered online. <laughs> the, like the weather just sucked, you know. And it's three hours away from my house. So it would have been like a six hour round trip. So I didn't want to stay anywhere. Plus I had just gotten back from Paris Thursday night and then would have had to have driven a six hour trip Saturday or Sunday. It's like, yeah. So there's that. The only other thing I want to share is I made pants. Ta-da. Pants. 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 Yay. They're even pleated. I mean, they're extremely wrinkly. Please don't mind it. I'm just very proud of myself. I'm not much of a sewist, but I'm trying. These are my first pants that I've ever made, and I wore them yesterday, day before yesterday, for the first time. I wore them to work. I got compliments. People wanted to know where I bought them, and I said, oh, I made them. Love doing that. <laughs> yeah, so I used a linen cotton blend from like Joann's. I technically had bought enough for a dress. And then I was like, I don't know in what world I thought this color next to my rosacea riddled face was going to be good. It's not. But pants paired with a white shirt looked so cute. I really, really love this pattern. It's the Chanterelle Pants by So Liberated. I know next to nothing and I was able to make pants, so you can make pants too if you want to. Everybody's making the bob pants, which are similar but not the same. I think I'm going to stick with these. They also smell really good. Like fresh laundry. Yeah, the only trouble with this, um, I have a dress, a dress and a skirt also made out of the same material in different colors. Wrinkles like you would not believe. I steamed it and I ironed it before I wore it to work and it still looked like I just rolled out of bed and I was like, I'm sorry. Whatever. But I did do, ugh. there's two views. You can either do the wide leg pant or I did the 
gathered pleat, which is super cute. It's got a pleat on the front and also the back. That's my me made me. That's all I got. I'm really proud of this though. Get, my husband got me a nicer sewing machine for Christmas and I've made some bags on it. Like two of my project bags right now. I just had extra fabric and just made a bag, but it's my first garment on my new machine and I will say it was much easier than my old one. So now I'm gonna take because I have enough left over, I'm gonna make shorts out of the same color. Because now I know I can do it, I'm just gonna do it. So yeah, I hope everything's well with you. Hope you and yours are doing good. I hope you are excited for summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, I hate to be hot, but I do love to swim. So you know, what are you gonna do? Going to the lake this weekend for the first time, very excited. I've got a river float planned with my book club in two weeks. Very excited for that lots of knitting plans. I think my dad's gonna take me on his boat this weekend so I'm gonna sit and knit on the boat while I'm being driven around like a queen. Very excited. So hope you're well. I'm sorry it's been so long. Not making any promises as to the next one. I would like to do at least once a month but I am also kind of in a place where I'm just gonna just gonna see how I feel. We're just gonna go from there. Just gonna take it as we feel it. So that's all I gotta say for now. I will see you guys Hopefully soon. Have a great day.